Now the importance of skill factor. Let's say I played this guy, his animations. So right now he's this little ink, itty bitty dinky little thing. And if I hit F on the keyboard, you'll see that he plays right. He plays correctly. But if I go scaling him, like I showed you, if I scaled this character up using this button right here. Uh, let's say I, I scaled them outside the box. So I want to take and click and drag him out and then scale them up just to kind of show you some of the destructive things that you can do with this character. Okay, I'm going to scale him up and then I'm going to hit play. And he works. Okay. Now, I would hit play first. That's the key. Uh, when you import your character in, hit play, make sure he works correctly, and then scale him up. If you scale him up first, what's going to happen is he's going to explode. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but it was something that I was having a little bit of problems with. He plays correctly now, and therefore he will work correctly when I house him within this. Okay, so there we go. He fits within this quite well. I might just move this down just a little bit. Hit play. And he still works. Good. All right, so that's how you get the animation in. It plays by default, just like I showed you before. But just make sure he works before you do any scaling. Worst case scenario, you drag a new one over. He's kind of indestructible at this point. You can't really hurt him. All right. And uh, if you don't want certain things to show up, well, th that's a very easy thing. If you look at under meshes, see, I, now I got a, categorize, a categorization process going on, like Blast, for example, you know, where we're, later on we're going to see how to take and toggle mesh render on and off and make uh, the blast work, okay? So really, at this point, you know, their characters are in there and you can take and turn off animation because I really don't want it to play. It'll, it'll screw up with the um, scripted animation that I put in there probably. And if you want to chase the character, well, this is where you add the scripts. Don't add the scripts here because what will happen is it will have some kind of bone deformation that goes on. I always kind of keep it very a, a very easy system and this is a big giant collider which this would be a very good thing with chase character. Okay, So chase character can be on that one and the player orientation or player character can be this since it's a transform node it could be here. And the game object itself that it's chasing could be down here. The speed at which I'm doing it, let's say I have it at 5, it's observed and its scythe distance is 75. Okay? All right, let's see if that works. If I run up to the character, the character can now chase me. Okay, what else is missing out of the equation? Well, um, one of these, which I got to remember where to put it, uh, a configurable joint. So the configurable joint will allow me to lock out the axes of all angles and its motion in Z. And I don't want it to jump. I think that would be odd. So I'll turn that off. The rigid body information, I can also freeze transformations here. Let's run up to it and see what happens. Good. It even captures me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so uh, there's probably something in there that's doing that, but it is kind of a funny thing. Remember. Uh, all the kind of crazy stuff that could happen. One being, when I imported all these in here, do they have any kind of mesh colliders? All right, so that's it for this video. Let's go on to the next.